Hi, how are you? Welcome to another episode of the Run Pass Option with Pro Football Hall of Famer Isaac Bruce and Doc Holiday. I am Doc Holiday. Isaac, what's up, man? How you doing? Stranger danger, stranger danger. Hey, I'm well and I'm blessed, man. Thanks for allowing me back on your show, the Run Pass Option, man. But uh, been a little fruitful here, uh, here and there. Uh, things are starting to kick up as far as football is concerned. So, man, um, I'm pleased to be here with you to do this show with you. Thanks for the invite, Doc. No, man, it's our show, man. You know what I'm saying? I have to hold it down, bro. You're a busy man, man. It's all understandable and it's all understood. So it's cool, bro. Hey, man, I want a coffee. What is that, dog? What you just grabbed, man? A cappuccino? <laughs> no, man, it's that white chocolate mocha uh -huh. with a coconut milk, dog. Not, not regular whey whole milk, man. That don't work for us. So uh, you switch it up, go to that, uh, that non-dairy and get that coconut milk, man. That flows right through you. What about uh, almond Plant milk? It's, it's not the same. I mean, it's, yeah, it's better almond than almond milk. milk. Almond, okay. Well, I mean, the taste is it's, it's to uh, you know it's to your taste. I like the coconut milk better than the almond milk. But with my cereal in the morning, I, I normally go with almond milk over coconut milk. So go figure. It's both both uh, plant based, and uh, it works with the body, not against it. I got you, man. That's a lot going on in South Florida, man. You know, almond milk, cocoa, uh, coconut milk, uh, 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 mangoes. <laughs> And all of that, bro. Oh, it's mango season. <laughs> it's boy. mango season. I know, man. It's hey, but good. look, my question, bro, is it Kevin Durant season, though, man? Because the big story right now is NBA free agency, bro. Kevin Durant told the Brooklyn Nets, you know what? It's cool, man. Y'all got too much. Y'all got too much going on. Sean Marks, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Steve Nash, I don't trust you and respect you. You don't know what you're doing. So time for me to get out of here. I know I got four years left. $200 million uh, left on my deal, man. But uh, I need y'all to trade me, man. And I would love to go to either uh, the Suns or the Miami Heat, possibly the Lakers, possibly Golden State. But since you are a Miami Heat fan, my question to you, Isaac, how the hell can he go to Miami, bro? Because the only way he would want to go to Miami is if he could play with Jimmy Butler. But Jimmy Butler is really the only asset Miami has to move to, to the Nets in order to get KD. So I know you would love to have KD, but, bro, is that something that you would even think about doing? No, absolutely, man. We're talking about Kevin Durant, okay? I mean, he, he, he put us on front street years ago as far as what his name was and who he is as a basketball player. Doc, I think the, the biggest thing that makes me smile about this situation is that the Miami Heat is involved in it. It's, it's one of his preferred landing spots. So that makes me smile. But on the other hand, Doc, it's like um, – you know, when you just look at the landscape of the Brooklyn Nets, you got you to gotta put a lot of what's happening right now on Kevin Durant and on Kyrie Irving, how they were in charge. They were pretty much de facto general managers. Now, let's be real. They were responsible for bringing in uh, the head coach, Steve Nash. He was responsible for that. Kevin Durant had to sign off on it. And all the personnel guys that come in, their bench, the building of their bench, he had to sign off on that. Uh, I'm sure he had to sign off on James Harden wanting out of that situation. He was responsible, first of all, for bringing James Harden in because they had played together in Oklahoma City. But, Doc, when you have this bed that you've made, Doc, I mean, I think, I think Kevin Durant has a responsibility to really clean up his room, straighten up his room, organize his room. And be a part of the solution and not look to the jump ship because this is a ship that they gave you complete control of to be the uh, uh what do you call the guy that's driving the ship the the you know the the person that's steering the, steering the ship left to right the captain he's the captain doc so he was given all those things he was given all those luxuries about who he wanted to play with who he could come in with and i get it because this is this is a day and age where free agents in the nba have the luxury of being able to control their destinies where they want to go. Now, unfortunately, Kevin Durant is in a position right now. He doesn't control that. He has four years left on that contract, and the Brooklyn Nets are saying, listen, bro, we respect you. We know you're one of the best. So, therefore, we're going to leverage that and get a king's ransom for you. So, we're not just going to send you particularly where you want to go. It's going to cost that team a whole lot, Doc. Players, future draft picks. And maybe some 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 cast uh cast considerations to land Kevin Durant, man. So he's the he's the big fish that's in this uh this uh, uh NBA uh free agency pool and uh, a lot of teams, a lot of teams. If if every team hasn't called, they should really check their system as far as uh free agents signings. They should they should recheck it, check it again. 
I got big trust in my guy, Pat Riley. He's always done it. He's brought in. He drafted Dwayne Wade. He brought in the, uh, the, the Shaq. He brought in Alonzo Mornings before that. Gary Payton was down here. And he's known for, at those very last minutes, making those transactions to make our team better, to keep it a superpower here in the Southeast. So you don't want Kevin Durant, is basically what you're saying. So you blaming Kevin Durant for what's happening. And so you want to know that? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just shining the light on the situation. I don't blame the guy. But do I want Kevin Durant? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Doc, we all need structure and we all want to be coached. Let's be, let's be real with it. We all want to be disciplined, man. Um, um, not too long ago, I got one of the, the best uh, compliments from my daughters that I think a parent could have. She said that I think you're disciplined. I think you're too strict. Other people outside of this household think that you are being too strict on us. And I smiled out and I, I felt a, a warm glow over my body. Like, <laughs> Father, I thank you. I thank you for teaching me how to teach her, how to train her. So Doc, we all want to be trained. Doc. We, we want to be able to go from one level to the next level. And it takes it takes teaching. It takes training and it takes self-discipline to move to that, that ultimate goal. Kevin Durant <laughs> wants championships, Doc. I think the Miami Heat can deliver that to him. I know he can, but my whole thing, this is what I don't understand, man. Everybody's just piling on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving right now, bro. They are the two targets who everybody's shooting down, blaming them for Brooklyn Nets problems and struggles. But what about the GM? What about Steve Nash? So what Kevin Durant and Kyrie, man, uh, wanted Steve Nash and they got what they wanted? Who gave them the power? Who ultimately gave them the power to do that? Steve Nash, still a head coach. He still didn't make any adjustments. He still didn't have them ready to play. Sean Marks, you still a GM. I can't just let them off the hook, man. KD and Kyrie, like I tell people, man, if they ask to go on their job and do whatever they wanted to do, they would do it too. But you want to blame KD and Kyrie for the Brooklyn Nets problems and let Steve Nash and, and uh, uh, Sean Marks and them dudes off the hook? No, nah, bro. I mean, I ain't with that, man, because, hey, they gave them power to do what they wanted to do. They had carte blunts, like when they talked about when Harden was in Houston. He like, y'all go ahead, bro. I fly, I fly later. You know what I'm saying? You, you, y'all the one let let them players out that kind of power. So I ain't mad at him, bro. I still put it on Steve Nash, trash ass coaching, and I put it on Sean Marks because the Brooklyn Nets organization hasn't won. I right, they've never won an NBA championship. They won two, two ABA championships. That franchise has only been to two conference championships, man. So in the finals. I mean, yeah, I said that's what I mean. That, I mean, they won two conference championships is what I meant. So they've been to the finals twice, but they lost. Mm -hmm. They don't have an NBA championship. So and I put it like this, like, like, I, like I said, people blaming Kyrie and, and Kevin Durant. I said it on my other show, bro, the Doc Holiday show. Sports is entertainment, right? But it's, it's a business, correct? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the Brooklyn Nets are a billion dollars more valuable since Kyrie and KD got there. Absolutely. Why, why come ain't nobody talking about that, bro? Because it's it, damn the wins and losses. We talking about the debits and the credits. And, and Brooklyn well, Nets are a billion dollars more valuable, bro. You, 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 could, you could be talking about that. The lay person could be talking about that. But you and I, Doc, we both know, we see through a, a, a set of different lenses because we're performer professional athletes. Yeah. And we know what, what garners respect. In that realm, it's number one, your ability to be there, to be, be available, your ability to play and to produce. And guess what, Doc? Last but not least, your championship credentials. Doc, we can, we can, I mean, we don't talk about money in the locker room. We don't, we don't talk about the, how much the, uh, the organization has made off of you or how much mm -hmm. they have paid you or how much you paid for this car. When you and I talk as former professional athletes, we talk about championships. We talking about moments in big games, how you execute it, how you perform. Doc, I can talk to you right now. I can call you right out the blue uh, and just be thinking about, man, I can't believe you fumbled in versus Louisville right there. Man, God dang. See, 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 see that's, what, that's what we talk about, Doc. See, that's, what, that's, what, that's, that's the conversation that, that'll come up first because you and I know it's a level of respect amongst us as professional athletes. We're part of that 1%, Doc. You're one percenter. So we're part of that group right there. So it, it, it's we really, it, it's leading with respect and it's receiving respect. Hey, the money is good. The money is great. Let's be real. Yeah. But those championships and those big shot moments and those uh, uh, big blocks that you made and those times where you went for 80 yards versus a, a bona fide number one defense. Doc, 
that's the respect. That's the salute that you'll get first and foremost and the hardest. I'm glad you cleaned that up, man, because I sure was going to say, well, why can't we can't talk about that? That damn block on that free safety you missed against Louisville. And I could have went for 96 yards. Had you got your goddamn block. And also against Louisville, if you when I when I did the spin move and you grabbing my damn jersey, trying to hold me up, I was gonna hold my damn self up. You helped tackle me, but you're right though. I, I understand what you're saying, man. But hey, KD been hitting big shots. He's been doing this thing, bro. I just don't understand, man. Mm-hmm. You know why he's getting all this hate. And I understand Kyrie, Kyrie does his own things a lot of times, and they don't like his mind because he's a free thinker. So people like attack intelligent motherfuckers who 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 saying something other than sports. But my whole point is, though, go, getting back to Miami. How does he get to Miami, man? How do they get him without Ooh. giving up Jimmy Butler? How do you do that? Because nah, you can't do I, it. He don't want to come I, if ain't Jimmy Butler not there. Well, like I said, Doc, it, there's been moments where Pat Riley, I, I think he gets a ton of credit. He built most of uh, what we know as Showtime LA yeah. Lakers. And then he went and left and, and went to the Knicks. He built up that team, took them to the finals. And from there, he's been in South Florida ever since. I mean, he has he has that do of youth. Uh, he's not planning on retiring anytime soon. I think he's probably in his mid-70s right now. So, Doc, he's pulled it off many a time. So, I mean, from, from what I hear, uh, my calls and my contacts that I make, I, th- I guess the way that we can do it is you know, you'll have to trade Ben Simmons away from uh, the, the, the Brooklyn Nets to make room for a Bam Adebayo, uh, a guy that, you know, we can probably send to really compensate that 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 uh that price tag that mm. that salary that Kevin Durant is making right now, and when you go from there, so if we can, if we're able to move Ben Simmons, the question is, can they move Ben Simmons? I mean, he's a guy who hasn't played in a full year and just coming off back surgery. So, you know, what kind of value does he have? How do you get him out of the way to make this happen have for Sean Moss? And Doc, just one more thing on what you what you said about. Uh, uh, the power structure in Brooklyn. You're absolutely yeah. right. Sean Marks de- deserves a lot of the blame because you're either coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. Yeah. Down here with the Miami Heat, I mean, we, uh, it, it's documented. You get your fat check every your, your, your the fat on your body check once a week just yeah. to see where you are. Uh, small things like that. The the administrators and the general managers and the presidents are actually doing their jobs here in South Florida which I feel will benefit guys like Kevin Durant, will benefit guys like Jimmy Butler. It's been proven, man. And guys, there's a culture, there's a way we do things down there that I think guys like that will flourish in. Yeah, and I believe you. And, and, and I believe that as well, man. I know Kevin Durant would go. I mean, my point is he deserves to go wherever he wants to go, man. And and and, and I'm I'm under the impression, bro, in, in the NBA, there's only a couple of people who are untradeable to get Kevin Durant. Ja Moran is one. LeBron is one. <laughs> What, bro? Right, what you laughing about, man? You, and we are, man, we would never get a job to get anybody right now, bro. We got a 22-year-old international superstar, man. Giannis is another one. LeBron is one. What, bro? What? Bro, bro listen, Untradeable. If he, wasn't, if he wasn't on that rookie contract, he would be on the trading block, too. Ja Moran. Keep it real, man. You grizzly drunk right now. Man, he's trading job for Kevin Durant, who's about to be 34 now. Yes. Bro. No way. Yes. No, yes, that's no will. way they would. Yes, no. you will. If you have a championship mindset, that's what you do. Bro, look what yes. just look what he just did. We just had Golden State up against the ropes, bro. And he missed did three games. Did you win? He missed three games. Did you win? Did Brooklyn win? No. Did Brooklyn no, win? No. Okay. No. There you did. go. Okay. They did. But anyway. We're talking about the Grizzlies. That we are. I'm just saying. But see, Jai's untradeable. LeBron is untradeable. Giannis is untradeable. Steph is untradeable. Anybody else, bro? I'm taking that phone call, man. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. So I no, know. I think everybody is up. Yeah. And they talk about him possibly going to Phoenix. Okay, cool, man. You know, put you with De- Devin Booker. I see that. Chris Paul, you know, you got, you can, you can sign and trade DeAndre Aiden since he don't seem to want to be there and uh, throw in Mikael Bridges. But the Lakers, no, and Golden State, bro. There's no way he can go back to Golden State, man. There's no way you can go back. He can go back to Golden. State. No, dog. He gonna he'll lose all respect from me if he take his ass back to Golden State, bro. Doc, doc. I mean, like I said, man. Like I said, it, it's it's not about what other people think about you, man. You got to be in that space, man, and and be able to not have that fear of man because it brings a snare. But the thing is. He's looking for structure. He went and tried to take what he learned 
with uh, the Golden State Warriors and take it to Brooklyn. It failed out. It didn't work out. Um, I think the structure in places like Miami and places like Golden State is fit for a guy like Kevin Durant. Because we, we heard it come out of his mouth before. All I just want to do is hoop. So if the structure is there for him, it, they're letting him know what time the team meeting is, what time the shoot around is, what time to tip off for the game. That's what he wants. They prepare that structure and everybody knows their role and can fit their role. And he'll come in and have a role instead. Doc, I mean, I, I got to respect it because because to me, if I was him, I would have never left. I'm OK. I'm good. Now, talking about leaving. Now, Shannon Sharp said Kevin Durant runs from challenges. He's running from challenges. He's run, bro. I say that's damn nonsense, man. Because that man spent nine seasons in Oklahoma City, bro, and didn't run and didn't try to force his way out and didn't ask for a trade when it was tough. They got to the – didn't win a championship. When he finally did leave, it was an unrestricted free agent and he went to Golden State. And that's why mm -hmm. I, I didn't agree with that comment because you said he always runs. Well, he could have stayed with Golden State where it was easy, man. So he ran from success and championship. Fair enough, fair statement, man, to say Kevin Durant is a runner. He's a track star. Well, I, I say this, Doc. I mean, I, I agree with you. He 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 did eight years in Oklahoma City. Um, you know, considering the, what what he was playing, the atmosphere he was playing under, and for him to go to Golden State, um, you know, he faced the criticism. So that's not run, that's not running away from criticism. He faced that. He knew what was coming with that. He faced it. Now there was a moment where he and Draymond Green started going at each other. Yeah. That's another opportunity, another conflict. Where I think there are certain levels of conflict that he's not willing to face right now uh that one with with Draymond Green was one uh this this one right here with the Brooklyn Nets is another doc you got four years left on your deal man let's let's keep it real I think you know ha having your inner circle fortified with uh let's say alpha people alpha males guys who can say you know what man we can get through this too we can rebuild right where we are you know it's the message to you know to our people doc you don't have to go running other places to get to get uh, your needs met. We can we can have our needs met right exactly where we are. Can we do it in Brooklyn? Can we build a team around Kevin Durant? Uh, people want to get under the pressure of time, but time to me is like a slave, man. You tell time what to do. Time doesn't tell you what to do. So I feel like uh, these two moments, there are two moments where I see where he didn't rise up to the challenge, Brooklyn being one of them. And the, the first time with, when we seen on national television, when he and Draymond got into a beef, which ultimately ushered him out of the door. It did, man. But Draymond, he, 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 if, he, if he helped run that man out of Golden State, he needed his ass. Whooped. But they have gotten the championship then. Yeah. But still, I mean, KD is a different type of dude, man. My whole point is that I Absolutely. respect him. I respect the dude's game. Dude is a hooper, man. Dude is easily one of the top three basketball players. In the NBA, man, I heard somebody say they got Luca over KD, and I'm like, man, you crazy as hell. There is no way, no way, Luca is better than no. Kevin Durant. You can kill that noise, man. So, no, no I mean, Luca, no John ja Morant, none, none of that. Bro, I'm I trading, didn't say I'm trading Luca for him. I'm trading John ja Morant for him. What are you trading Jimmy Butler for? Him? I'm trading Jimmy Butler. Okay, all right. Okay yes. then. Okay, now yes. you now you sound a little. Uh, yes. uh, okay, now you sound a little fan. I'm not. I'm not Miami Heat drunk, man. Man, like you are Miami drunk. Man, you are Miami Heat drunk, man. You ain't even want to talk about their summer league, bro. I was gonna talk about Nikola Yo Yo Jokic <laughs> balling out in the summer league, man. They went one and two in the summer oh. league, but they won their last game against Golden State in the summer league. So you know what I'm saying? But okay, I got you. I got you. But once again, bro, John ja Moran is untradeable, man. Um, but Jimmy Butler, not, but Jimmy Butler is not on Kevin Durant's level. Now. You, you you do realize that, correct? I do. Okay. Yes, All I right. do agree with that. See, see, look at me. I agree real easy with that. Doc. That's that's not a problem for me, man. I mean, I, I recognize the real when it's real. I mean, I recognize the real when it's real too. I'm just saying, bro. As long as we know, but at the same time, and uh, before we get off, John ja Morant, hey, bro, he got that bag, man. He and Zion Williamson got that Absolutely. bag. Isaac, five years, one hundred and ninety-three million, bro. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. That's awesome, man. I mean, they, they see the potential that are, that are in these two guys. Fortunately, we've seen what John Morant brings to the table. I mean, I think his game is, is, is definitely on the rise. Doc. I think he needs a mid-range jump shot and to push his three-point shot a little higher. So those, those are the areas I feel like he should work on. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to see the full potential 
of a Zion Wigginson, man. I mean, for his namesake, man, he should be out there doing marvelous things. But, you know, they, I think the Pelicans just couldn't afford, couldn't afford to let this guy walk and not pay him. So they they taken another risk on the guy, and I think he's going to pan out. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it, man. I just like the fact that he got that bag, man, both of them, bro. And I tell people, man, Memphis is a very affordable place to play. If you're making $40,000 a year in Memphis, you can kind of live kind of comfortably. This dude's going to be making $40 million a year. And Ike, man, he just gave a woman a $500 tip. So salute to John Morant at a restaurant, bro. He just gave a, he just gave the older sister, man, the royal elder, a $500 tip. And she was looking at him like, you know, what you do with some? You play basketball? He was like, yeah. She, she was like, you going to the NBA? He's like, I'm already in the NBA. Oh, what's your name? She didn't know who he was. She knew about them five yeah. bands he gave, though. So that's nice, yeah. man. It's, it's good to see that, man. But I still say, you know, hey. I just like what the Grizzlies doing, and I like what the Heat doing. But I love it. I, I was. I'm just interested in seeing what Kevin Durant is going to do, man, and where he's going to go, and them dudes getting that loot and getting that money like that. But I do want to ask you this though, because you know Shaq came out and said, man, that he's jealous of the money that these dudes make, bro. He says he's jealous. He's he's jealous of the money that these current NBA players make, and that affects sometimes that takes into account how he analyzes during broadcasts on inside. Come on, Ike, man. That's weak as hell, bro. Ike B, that's weak, no. man. It may seem weak, but it's human nature. I stand with Shaq on that. Because when the I hate, see that, I think... You don't about, hate... Hold on. You don't hate on the receivers nah, getting listen, all this loot now, Ike B. You listen, don't hate listen, on that. No. Nah, nah. it's, it's, it's a fact that human nature, you can go right into hate, but the, the the evil part about it is remaining in that hate. You know what I'm saying? We we have those abilities to see someone get blessed and mm, man, this dude can't even get off the jam. You know what I mean? So, but but then you know, we can come back to ourselves, like the prodigal son. We can come back to ourselves and say, you know what? God did that for him, he could do it for me. So I quickly go from hate to reminding myself of love that I'm loved also, and I'm next in line. So um, I, I think it's great honesty, which is what we talking heads in the media always want from athletes and yeah. athletes. At, at Let's be real, Doc. We want you to be real about it because, you know, quite now, you ask about the jealousy question a lot. Shaq is just being honest, you know, it, particularly in an industry where he flourished. And, you know, you go back and see, you know, what the, what the guys are getting now. It's, it's, it's strict, basically strict on the market. The TV, the TV money, the new TV money that's coming in every year, Doc, is growing, man. The increase is happening. Now, you don't have to be outside looking in. Get back in it some kind of way, man, and make sure you, you know, you get your portion of it. Man, you know what? That sounds good, bro, but I have had conversations with you privately, just you and I, and you still didn't hate on no. I was hating on the receivers because I'm like, God dang, all this money they making, bro. I'm thinking, man, I know what you would have made and what Moss and them would have made and Rice and them would have made. But, dog, you always defend these receivers and the salaries. That I ain't never heard no hate come out your mouth, man, for the money these receivers are making, bro. And you know if, if it was in your times, man, y'all would have been getting that same loop, bro. So that sounds good talking about you stand with Shaq. But, dog, you don't think like Shaq because I, I used to want you to hate on cats, and you wouldn't do it. Well, dog, listen, most times when I see these guys get the new contracts, immediately I don't have a microphone wiping in my face. I have time to reflect. I have time to, to, to remember just how blessed my life is, uh, what's ahead of me, what I currently have. And by that time, it's dissipated, Doc. You know, I can go in back into my kingdom mode and be grateful uh, for what these guys have received. They work hard. The market is what it is. They're out there signing their five-year, $250 million deals, Doc. And, and there's no reason. I, I mean, it, let's be real. Football, basketball, sports in general isn't the only way that we can be blessed financially. So we, we know that, I know that, and you know that. So, I mean, more power to the brothers, man. Go ahead and do your job. And Shaq don't come out there half-stepping, and you can't make no free throws, don't come out there half-stepping. <laughs> I'm going to say something about you then. I'm going to stay out, I'm gonna stay out your pocket, but I'm going to say something about you. I got gotcha, you, but, but Shaq big head ass too. He also know it's more than one way because he's worth a half a billion dollars, bro. He didn't get all that playing basketball. So that's the problem I have with what he's saying. Like, come on, big Shaq. I want y'all to be honest, but come on, dog. Don't do that, man. Now, Rudy Gobert, hell yeah, you would destroy Rudy Gobert. But it is what it is, man. The man got $200 million. Let, let, it, let it loose. You sound like a damn fool, bro. You, you, you're worth half a billion. So anyway, man, 
Uh, but I got we got to move the NFL, bro. I ain't really much to talk about right now, man. You know, uh, but training camps are about to about to uh uh get started. But I saw something. I wanted to ask your opinion on it, bro. And I, Michael Parsons, Dallas Cowboys linebacker, man, says he and Trayvon Diggs, bro, can be better than Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, the Rams dynamic Superman duo. I mean. Mm -hmm. It's something to pull for. I see where he going. But young fella, young fella, you said y'all can be better than. See, it's the problem that when you said y'all can be better than them. Now I'm like, pump your brakes a little bit, bro. Pump, pump, pump. You, do you have any problem with Micah Parsons saying that? Comparing themselves. Maybe he's not comparing them, but he is comparing them. Because Aaron Donald is a different kind of breed, bro. Well, I say, Doc, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's all it's all it's oftentimes in the off season where we set our goals. We do our goal setting and, uh, you know, we kind of keep it in front of us. Now, I'll say this about those two Parsons and uh, Diggs. I think Parson is the, he's the straw. I think he's the straw that stirs the coffee for yeah. uh, or whatever drink you, you are that for the Dallas Cowboys defense. Now, saying that, it, it's often the pressure or making a quarterback throw the ball when he's not ready to throw the ball or having an errant throw that's caused by guys like Aaron Donald, that's caused by Michael Parsons, that really propels a young guy like Diggs to make plays to make, the way he's making them. Because, you know, last year he was a ball hawk. Let's just say he covered, but he wasn't a shutdown guy. He, nice. a, a guy that I say was always in the right place at the right time. And it ben he benefited from it. So um, their, their lofty goal of being or of wanting to be the best two defensive duos, I think it's, it's set pretty high. I think he has, you know, uh, I think he has the, the physical ability, ability Michael Parsons, uh, get after the quarterback. I think the goal of uh, sacking the quarterback two times, he wants, he wants to break that. And that being said, Doc, he also has that star. We know what that star on the side of his helmet brains i mean it's it's a uh, that one of the largest brands in sports if not the biggest brands in sports so you get a lot of media attention and, and and anything that these guys say uh in season or out of season the light is shining on it significantly so it doesn't take that much uh i'll say for those guys to be catapulted into that position with the help of the media but on paper doc now on paper you me aaron donald you give me Jalen Ramsey any day. I'll take those two. For real. And, exactly. And I see, Michael, you had 13 sacks last year, and Trayvon Diggs had 11 picks, but I'm with you, man. He had a lot of picks. He was just in the right place at, a, at the right time because he's not a shutdown corner. He got a lot of work to do when you got something to do with that. But I understand where he's talk, coming from. I understand what he's saying. And I know, man, one more thing about the summer league. You don't want to talk about it, but everybody losing their damn mind because Chet Holmgren, long ass, had 23.7 rebounds, four assists, and six blocks in his first summer league game. I'm like, so damn what, man? It's summer league, man. Now they, they, they trying to propel this dude, and I'm not giving y'all an interview unless my teammate is here. Man, if you don't get your ass on that mic and talk, young fella, and shut the hell up, man, this summer league, man. Cats getting overexcited about exhibition basketball in the summer league, man. Come on, Chet Hunger. Pump your brakes, bro. Hey, you listen, I think he'll be a great player, Doc. Um, you know, this this summer league is a step up from AAC basketball It's a step up from WCC basketball, ACC basketball. It's a step up, just a smaller step up. But at the same time, I think what would impress me more with Chet Holmgren is just his physique. Uh, show me what he's doing in the weight room, how he's putting on weight or how he's getting stronger. Uh, I think those things right there will be what stands out to a lot of people when we start thinking about Chet Holmgren right now. In the beginning. Yeah, man. And for real, once again, Chet Holmes, it's summer league. Pump your brakes. Calm your ass down. Now, you got a lot of open shots. you 7-1, man. I call him the big noodle. And I call, because I used to call Tim Dun Duncan. Uh, Tim Duncan had a dude he played with at Wake Forest. Man, I think his name, Lauren. Yeah, they about to, they about to, they look tall dude. I forgot his name. I think it was Lauren something. But he was, you know, they, they got the same kind of body type. So, the big noodle. Calm down, big noodle. Calm down. But before we want to wrap this thing up, Isaac. Got to shout out Mike Greer, man. He hired by the San Jose Sharks. He becomes the first black general manager in NHL history. 
How about that, bro? Oh, that's awesome, Doc. I mean, his brother is uh, the general manager here down with the Miami Dolphins. So uh, we talk about the discipline, uh, the, the, uh, the love that's been shown in these families, man. It's, it's wonderful to see, Doc. And uh, if you got an extra moment, I'd like to give a shout out as well. Of course. Man. Um, <clears throat> you know, oftentimes uh, a lot of people don't see our story behind the glory that's seen and just that's propelled on these uh, on these cameras, these podcasts and other shows. But um, I want to give a shout out to Marlon Briscoe. He was gathered to his people yes. uh, uh, a couple weeks, uh, a couple of days ago. Doc. And, you know, my backstory with Coach Briscoe, that's the way I know him, because I met him. Uh, he was my wide receiver coach at my junior college, West Los Angeles Junior College, my first year. And uh, man, we, when you just think about his history and uh, his his impact in the National Football League, man, the dog is amazing because, you know, he was a quarterback out of o Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, he came in playing quarterback, quarterback for the Denver Broncos, ended up winning the first uh, football game by, quote, African-American in the National Football League uh, and was traded to the Buffalo Bills, where he subsequently became a wide receiver. And went to the Pro Bowl twice as a wide receiver. He was a member of the 1972 uh, perfect team, the Miami Dolphins, who won the Super Bowl 7-14 and 0, the only team that's ever done that in history. But not only that, he also tutored guys like James Harris, who was the first, quote, black Af African-American quarterback to win a playoff game for our Los Angeles Rams. So he has a lot of history. You're talking about guys who, uh, who, who, sh who belong in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and you really can't base it on their numbers, I think Marlon Briscoe is definitely a guy that belongs in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, one of his opponents, the guy that played against him, and uh, I think they played together in Buffalo, he said Marlon Briscoe would have been the first, quote, African-American quarterback to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame if they let him play. Because he's not only a passer, but he was also a guy who could use his legs, he could keep drives going. And we see how big of a problem that is right now in the NFL. When you look at the Mar Lamar Jacksons of the world, uh, you look at the Josh Allens of the world, the guys who can throw it and run it at the same time. So those dual threats, he was the very first guy, Marlon Briscoe, to be that dual threat. And unfortunately, Doc, he didn't get the opportunity to show his skills. And uh, I think that affected him uh, once he left the National Football League as well. But Doc, he was my wide receiver coach, taught me a ton, gave me my first pair of cleats uh, that was given to him by – uh, the uh, uh, Al Davis, owner of the Los Angeles Raiders. When I first met him, he passed those cleats to me, man. And I wore it for two years. So uh, big salute to Marlon Briscoe, his family, man. Uh, much love to him and uh, everything he taught me and the way he tutored me, man. Big love, big shout out to Marlon Briscoe. Huge shout out, shout out to Marlon Briscoe, man. I never knew that story, bro. So, man, I never, as long as I've been yeah. knowing you, man, 30-something, I never knew that story, bro. That's big time, man. So shout out to you, Marlon Briscoe, man. Well said, Isaac Bruce. Anything else you want to add, man, before we get out of here, man? Because I was going to say something about this uh, uh this hockey, but I don't. I, I just want to end it on the Marlon Briscoe salute, man, to tribute, bro. Yeah, man, it's a great, great Marlon Briscoe, man. Great stories, uh, great storyteller, great athlete, great competitor. Taught me a whole lot about the position of playing wide receiver, man. There you go. And that's going to do it for another great episode of the Ron Pass Option with Pro Football Hall of Famer Isaac Bruce and Doc Holliday. We talk sports because we know sports. We out.